During my research position as a Blue Marble Space Young Scientist, I have been focused on improving the analysis of planetary atmospheres as a form of life detection. Searching for life on other planets will teach us a lot about our place in the universe and the importance of life on Earth. An important tool to employ in this stream of research focuses on biosignatures, and the chemical sciences these are often sought after in the atmospheres of other planets. Currently, astrobiologists have studied the equilibrium of atmospheres over short periods of time as a potential biosignature. While this method has solid scientific background, it merely offers a snapshot of the atmosphere and can often lead to agnostic biosignatures. Looking for a new perspective, I made the connection to climate change when I noticed how our atmospheric composition has changed over time. I was left facing two questions. First, how does life change the composition of its home atmosphere as it grows in population? Second, do the atmospheres of other planets change over long periods of time, similar to the Earth? Here on Earth, we can go back in time to study our atmosphere by examining ice cores. Analyzing these cores is the most common and trusted method for examining the Earth's older atmosphere. Cores consist of layers of snow and ice that build over time while still containing past concentrations of greenhouse gases. However, the drills used for extraction cannot be easily applied on other planets, as they have high power requirements and utilize hydraulic fuels. An in-situ, non-intrusive alternative to drilling large ice cores would be to use a spectrometer. Raymond spectroscopy is a viable option as it already has strong academic support for working in the Martian environment and has a history of being used to detect microbial life. As well, other sources have listed absorption and plasma mass spectroscopy as viable options for detecting the necessary molecules. To move further with this idea, several concepts still need to be considered. Mainly, I believe that there may exist an ideal combination of spectroscopy methods that will yield the best results. As well, to keep using the Earth as a benchmark, anomalous data must be taken into consideration, such as the Industrial Revolution and mass deforestation. Furthermore, spectral subtraction may be necessary when analyzing deeper layers of ice with a spectrometer. I would like to thank Blue Marble Space for this opportunity, and my PI, Dr. Tony Gia, for his guidance. Thank you very much for listening.